I'm Dr. Chip Levy. I'm professor of medicine at the Ashna Heart and Vascular Institute, Ashna Clinical School, the University of Queensland School of Medicine here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I'm here to discuss our study entitled Ideal Cardiovascular Health and Mortality, the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study, which is published in the October 2012 issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I'd first like to start off by acknowledging and congratulating the excellent work of our first and lead author, Dr. Enrique Artiro. He's from the University of Almeria in Almeria, Spain. And the senior author, Dr. Steve Blair, who's internationally known for his work on physical activity and cardiorespiratory fitness research. The recent 2012 update from the American Heart Association has emphasized the continuing burden of cardiovascular disease and stroke in our society, with a prevalence of nearly 40% for cardiovascular disease in those approaching age 60 years, and a prevalence of 70% in those older individuals. The direct and indirect cost of cardiovascular disease and stroke in the year 2008 was estimated to be $300 billion and is projected to be nearly $500 billion by the year 2015 and reaching a staggering $1,200 billion by the year 2030, demonstrating that cardiovascular disease, the prevention and treatment, will be, continue to be a major focus for our society. Now, in these recent 2020 American Heart Association update, they have emphasized a new philosophy, that is, trying to obtain 2020 goals of ideal cardiovascular health in efforts to reduce the morbidity and mortality and reduce the staggering cost that cardiovascular disease is having on our society. They have seven major metrics to achieve ideal cardiovascular health. The first four are behavioral. One is just simply not smoking. Second would be trying to achieve an ideal body weight, a body mass index between 18.5 and 25. A third is achieving the recommended physical activity goals of approximately 150 minutes per week of moderate physical activity. And the fourth is eating a good, good diet, high in fruits and vegetables, two fish meals per week, high in grains, and having sodium or salt less than one point gram per day. Now, we certainly could argue the value of these salt recommendations, and that's a, a discussion for another day. The other three metrics are having a cholesterol under 200, having a blood pressure under 120 over 80, and third, not having diabetes. So if you meet all seven of these metrics and you do not have underlying cardiovascular disease, meaning no coronary heart disease, no heart failure, no stroke, then you meet the criteria for ideal cardiovascular health. While well, study, we assessed 11,993 participants from the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study. Three-fourths of these participants were men, and they entered in the study between 1987 and 1999. And the data was collected by the senior author, Dr. Steve Blair, when he was working uh, for the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study at the Cooper Clinic uh, years ago. In this study, these 11,993 participants had a mean age of 46 years at baseline, and they were followed on average for 11.6 years to assess mortality. During the follow-up, there were 310 deaths, including 70 cardiovascular disease deaths and 127 deaths from cancer. Now, interestingly, only 29 participants out of 11,993, that's 0.2%, met all seven of the metrics for ideal cardiovascular health. Well, if they had three or four of these metrics, the participants had, during follow-up, a 55% reduction in cardiovascular disease mortality compared to those who met only zero to two of the metrics. And if they met between five and seven of the ideal metrics, they had a 63% reduction in cardiovascular disease mortality. Now, total mortality was also strongly associated with achieving more of the metrics, but cancer mortality was not affected uh, by the number of ideal cardiovascular metrics obtained. 
We believe that our study is quite important because it demonstrates the potential value of the American Heart Association 2020 goals to achieve ideal cardiovascular health and what it could do on subsequent cardiovascular disease mortality. So these 2020 American Heart Association goals could have quite a significant impact on our society. And therefore, we believe that our data have quite significant national and public health implications. To our knowledge, there's been only one other group that has, has assessed these ideal metrics from the American Heart Association 2020 goals to achieve ideal cardiovascular health in a large population. And that's from the NHANES study. Lee and colleagues in two separate papers earlier this year in circulation assessed the NHANES population. Now their study had fewer participants than ours, about 7,000, and they only followed the, the participants for about half as long, um, about five and a half years. But they still had nearly double the mortality, over 500 deaths during their follow-up. In their first paper earlier this year in circulation, they also showed with higher attainment of the ideal cardiovascular metrics, there was a significant reduction in cardiac mortality. In their more recent paper, though, they demonstrated that with the current trends that are going on in our society, it is very likely that very few of our population are going to achieve even most, much less all, of these ideal cardiovascular metrics so we're going to have a lot of work to do if we're going to try to come even close to achieving these 2020 goals for ideal cardiovascular health. Now, we had several limitations in our study that should be mentioned. First, our population was mostly Caucasian. It was mostly middle-aged participants, mostly middle to upper class, a fairly well-educated group. So one could argue that this group may not be applicable to all segments of our society. Also, as I mentioned, we had relatively low mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality. So our population, one could say, was overall relatively healthy. But still, even in this relatively healthy population, as I mentioned, only 29 of 11,993, a 0.2%, met all seven ideal cardiovascular metrics according to the 2020 goals from the American Heart Association. So in conclusion, we can say that there was a very low prevalence of obtaining the ideal cardiovascular metrics according to the American Heart Association 2020 goals, at least in a middle-aged, middle-class population that was entered from the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study between 1987 and 1999. Second, these American Heart Association 2020 goals to achieve ideal cardiovascular health reflect quite well on the possibility to significantly reduce cardiovascular disease mortality in that our study demonstrated a graded and quite significant reduction in cardiovascular disease mortality with greater achievement of these ideal cardiovascular metrics. And finally, we believe that these data emphasize the fact that much greater efforts are needed to try to obtain more of these ideal cardiovascular metrics in a larger segment of our society if we're going to significantly reduce the morbidity and mortality as well as the staggering direct and indirect cost that cardiovascular disease is having in our society. Thank you very much. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.